Okay, hi, is this, hi, hello. I'm Julia Brizendine and I'm a neurologist. I know, sounds geeky, but I basically stare into people's heads all day. Well, first of all, it's helpful to know that women are generally more sensitive to threats than men are. This is because of the part of the brain that senses danger, the amygdala. In women, this area is more easily activated, which is why we're more tuned to potential dangers that men may not even notice. It also doesn't help that we're typically smaller than men and full of holes. The area of the brain responsible for recognizing errors and flaws is larger in the female brain. This makes women more self-conscious and more likely to be perfectionists. Scientists call it hypervigilance, whereas people tend to call it being neurotic. Grooming causes the female brain to release endorphins, another feel-good chemical. This is nature's way of motivating us to stay hygienic and prevent infection. Monkeys do it, lions do it, girlfriends do it. When humans are under stress, the brain releases cortisol, a chemical involved in the fight or flight response. But female brains can reduce the secretion of cortisol by organizing things and getting obsessed with details, which allow her to feel in control. Now, a couple thousand years ago, this behavior was useful, but today it probably just seems like we're solving problems that don't exist. In prehistoric times, females were much more vulnerable, and the ones with strong social connections had a higher survival rate, whereas for males, survival depended on aggression and competition. This could explain why in meetings, women tend to avoid conflict and seek consensus. Children who were exposed to maternal stress in utero become addicted to stress chemicals in the womb. Later in life, these offspring grow up to be more anxious and easily adrenalized. The scientific term for this is epigenetic imprinting, but it's commonly referred to as turning into your mother. The area that's responsible for defending your turf is larger in the male brain, and it contains special circuits to detect territorial challenges by other males. When challenged, males produce more testosterone and adrenaline, which immediately makes men more confident. When a female over-medicates her brain, her neurochemicals become imbalanced, resulting in fatigue and suppression of healthy emotion. Because medications affect hormone levels, they can also lead us to smell pheromones differently, which can even cause us to select the wrong mates. So a female can instantly decode the information encrypted in a male's pheromones, which helps her determine genetic compatibility. This, coupled with cultural values and how her childhood went, determines what attracts us to a potential mate. The confluence of all this is what we call chemistry, or love at first sight. Although men have earned the reputation for being more stoic than women, they actually have stronger emotional reactions than females. But due to social conditioning, within 2.5 seconds, a man tends to change his face to hide or suppress emotion. So it's probably not surprising that females have a more active system for emotional memory, which means we recall feelings, not just facts, something that's harder for a man to do. This is why it seems like women can access visceral memories with search engine-like speed. When an unexpected event occurs, the amygdala immediately evaluates if a threat is present. If so, the brain freezes to brace for a fight-or-flight response. But in a traumatized brain, the amygdala loses the ability to distinguish between everyday events and real danger. So if a woman's brain has been emotionally traumatized, it often may seem like she's being dramatic. Okay, so gossip activates the brain region involved in social cognition, the process by which we learn to interact with others. So gossiping is critical for females to maintain strong social bonds, so our brains are hardwired to produce dopamine, which rewards females for relationship building and learning the norms of society. So I know I said women seek consensus, but if the amygdala is activated, her adrenaline can give her enough confidence to override the instinct to be cooperative. 
both the amygdala and hippocampus are necessary for fear extinction to occur. But if both regions of the brain are abnormal due to trauma, that person may recoil if something reminds them of their past. This is commonly seen as overreacting or being annoying. I viewed these qualities as weaknesses, but that was a flaw in my approach. And in many ways, my life. The truth is that these stereotypical female qualities are actually strengths. Nurturing, passionate, tenacious, supportive, and resilient. These don't seem that bad. And even though the female brain can at times be complicated and confusing, nobody can deny our ability to get back up. Every day our brains tell us there's a lot to be afraid of. But even though we're hardwired to avoid danger, we're also wired for courage. So when it comes to fight or flight, flight is always easier. But every now and then you come across something that's worth fighting for.